Let's have a look at how we encode feature vectors for tabular data with PyTorch. I don't need Google Colab G Drive access, so I'm going to leave that out. But here I am going to go ahead and load in a simple data set that I created of my, of my own design. It's at my dataheatandresearch.com site. And you can see the you can see this basically loaded into pandas. It's not showing you all of the columns there, but this is the data set. We've got an ID field, various types of jobs. There are categoricals and numerics in there. And we're going to make some changes to this. So the target column is the, the column that you're trying to predict. That is product, which is here. So classification. There's an ID column, which is probably not too useful to you for, for prediction, but it is useful to keep track of these. And many of the fields are numeric. They may not require further processing. And the income column does have some missing values. So here we see that for job, we can calculate the dummy variables for these. We're going to get the dummies for it. Dummy is, it's also called one hot encoding. This is where you take, say you had three different values. You're going to blow that out to three columns and say you had three different jobs, A, B, and C. You can't put A, B, and C into the into a numeric frame to go into a neural network. So you're going to put in three columns and only one of them will be hot at the same time. Only one can be one at the, a time. One, zero, zero, or zero, one, zero, or zero, zero, one. And that's what this is doing here. If we run it, we can then look at the dummies. There's a bunch of different jobs, 33 different types. So you literally have 33 columns like is specified here with all zeros, but one in there. That's why there are advanced features in PyTorch to deal with sparsity because you can have, you can have a thousand different classes and it'll be all zeros except for one only one value in there. So what you'll want to do then is concatenate this into your data frame and you basically do this and then it gets put back into your, into your data frame. It becomes a bit unwieldy looking at these as all these values dummies get put back into there. But what has to happen is you've got to get this thing entirely too numeric by the time that you send it off to PyTorch. We're going to also do this same exact thing for the area code. And we click that, we run it, and we've, we've put those now back into it. Income has some missing values. So what we're going to do is calculate the median. And this is calculating the median minus the missing values because you can't really calculate a median if there's still missing values in there. But it automatically excludes those. And then we fill in the missing values from income with the median value. Now we've got a lot of columns as we've added in all these dummy variables and other things. And that's that's the whole the whole list of all of them. We can then drop the ID field, which we're going to do here, because you see it at the beginning still. We're going to drop it, print out the column. And then finally, we are going to do dot values. So this converts the X columns that we were going to get. That's just a list from above of the columns that we're, that we're interested in. Those were the columns minus the ID. And then we are going to uh, retrieve those. You also want to drop the product because that's not going to be on the X side. That's what we're trying to predict. That would be, you call that target leak if the target somehow gets into the X or information about the target does. And then we, uh, we can basically get the X value, what we're using to predict. We can do the label encoder. So that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to the number of labels that we have. That's because PyTorch will take care of converting those labels into the dummy variables for you. And then we, we, we print out the values. You can still see the true and false is there and the, uh, the actual numeric values. And we've now got it in a, the form that we can send it off to PyTorch. If you wanted to do a regression, you would probably use income. And we had examples of regression in the previous module. Thank you for watching the video and subscribe so that you don't miss any new updates from this course and like the video if this was helpful to you. I also do other projects on artificial intelligence on this YouTube channel.